abortion has and continues to leave a lasting impact on families living in our community. The impact of an abortion often leads individuals into a silent suffering. Left unhealed, many people turn to drugs, alcohol, and unhealthy relationships to cope with the shame and guilt. As a result, many families find themselves living in dysfunction. Unhealed parents who have faced an abortion experience struggle to raise their growing children with the love and vigor necessary to support healthy development. In turn, the child becomes more at risk of repeating dysfunctional patterns of behavior. Unhealthy relationships is often one of the first places young people begin to address their need for love and acceptance. These relationships can lead to premarital affairs, which leaves vulnerable teens and young adults at risk of facing an unexpected pregnancy. Pregnancy Solutions exists to empower men, women, and youth with life-affirming options and support. For nearly 20 years, we have been providing no-cost pregnancy care support to our community. We serve over 700 new clients each year across three locations in South Sarasota and Charlotte counties. Being pro-life is about more than saving babies. It is also about raising children. It is about coming alongside mothers and fathers and helping them build healthy relationships and families. It is about helping students look past the symptoms of today and challenging them to think about how their decisions will affect their future. It is about bringing stability to chaos, restoring hope, and nurturing spiritual growth. Pregnancy Solutions is a comprehensive and compassionate care provider, educating teens, equipping fathers and mothers facing an unexpected pregnancy, providing hope and healing to men and women impacted by an abortion experience, and empowering families to live healthy and fulfilling lives. Well, good morning, DC3. How y'all doing this morning? My name is Lisa Rowe, and I have the honor and privilege of serving Pregnancy Solutions as their executive director. And today I get to bring along with me one of our amazing board members, Rupert Gordon. And we just want to share a little bit of our heart, but I can't help but acknowledge how the Holy Spirit intertwines both Sanctity of Human Life Sunday, but also this message that we're about to receive about revolutionary relationships, because that's our heart at Pregnancy Solutions, is to come alongside, like you heard, men and women in their most broken and unexpected journey. And and meet them with a relationship, oftentimes the first time they've ever had a healthy relationship. And so we have been serving South Sarasota and Charlotte for 20 years, and we have had an office in Port Charlotte for almost three years. And we know that the impact of abortion is so, it runs the gamut, right? And there are many people in here that have experienced an abortion themselves. And if you are hearing this message, and maybe it's the first time that you've actually felt that connection on your heart, we have a huge healing program for you. And so please, at the end of service, or reach out to us confidentially on our um, Facebook page, online, we want to meet you right where you're at, because we know that that abortion experience is continuing to hurt you, and what it does is then it hurts the next generation. And like we heard, it, it, the text messaging and the lack of relationship is leading our teens into places that we don't even understand. I don't think we've even seen the full, you know, really impact that that's had depression, suicide, all of it. So we have a prevention program that helps teens understand what healthy relationships are. And we ultimately want to continue keeping our pregnancy center open so that when that person comes in and has that unexpected pregnancy because they have been participating in at-risk behaviors, we can meet them with a loving relationship, provide them free service, free counsel, and walk that journey out. So we are just grateful to be alongside of you today, share what it is that we're doing in the community, whether it's that you want to get involved or you know somebody that needs these services, we want to be in this community making great impact. And so, Rep, share with us what our dads are doing. All right, so I'm, I'm Repert Gordon. I get the privilege to serve on the board with Pregnancy Solutions. And so one of the great pillars of Pregnancy Solutions is, is the men, the, the, the soon-to-be dads, the fathers. And statistics show that uh, for, for half of the women, 
over half of the women that are facing an unplanned pregnancy, that the man involved is most influential in their decision. So we have rookie dads, and rookie dads basically walks alongside of that man involved, giving him counseling through the process. And can I tell you today, to be fully staffed at our three locations, we need 27 men counseling the men that come into our centers. Today we have nine men doing the job of 27. So I see a lot of men in the room, and I know there's a lot of men in the Northport room. If you want to invest in others, and I can assure you that uh, people are worth the investment, then I encourage you to see us backstage uh, after the service. Secondly, we're really excited to share about our Walk for Life coming up on March 7th. Okay, so annually we do two fundraisers to support this organization. One is the banquet in the fall, and the second is our Walk for Life. Last year, we raised over $110,000 to support the Pregnancy Solutions Ministry. And with those monies, we supported over a thousand women that came into our centers, all three locations, um, who, had, who had needs that they needed support. And with that money, we saved 41 babies, okay, in 2019. Okay, so for 2020, we have an audacious goal of $150,000. Why $150,000? Because quite frankly, we want to save more than 41 babies in 2020. Okay, we need your help, your support. So uh, you can find us on Facebook and find us online. P.S. Uh, P.S. I want to double check my link here. It is uh, for the P.S. P.S. Walkforlife.org. Excuse me. And so on March 7th. Uh, from 9 to 12, registration is 8 a.m. We're going to have a walk in Venice, and we're going to have a walk at Bayshore, Bayshore Live Oak Park, just across the bridge in Port Charlotte. We need volunteers, we need walkers, and we need support from the community, so I want you to please come out and support us. Thank you, DC3, for giving us the opportunity to share with you about Pregnancy Solutions and the upcoming walk, and if you need any more information, we'll be in the back after service. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thanks, uh, thanks, Lisa. Now, I know it's 8 o'clock, but you need to give that team a huge hand, right? Come on, somebody. It's early. I'm on Benadryl. I, I am smooth, I'm, but I'm still hyped up because Jesus is in the place. Amen? And I'm going to say this, maybe your revolutionary action, we talked about that two weeks ago. I want you to think about one thing you can do this year that will revolutionize your life. For someone in this room, you need to get involved in that ministry. And you need to commit to it for a whole year. Some of you guys, come on men, you fight club guys, my men, you need to step up. I'm calling you out. James, we read it, right? Remember, if you go on and read the rest of that James 1, it says it's one thing to listen to the Word of God. How many we know we need to listen, but you also need to do something? Turn to somebody and say, get off your butt and do something. So here's the challenge today. I got about 20 minutes. Good morning, Northport, by the way. Everybody say hey to our Northport campus. And I get to talk about the thing I'm most passionate about. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to save most of this message for the whole month of February. Everybody with me? What I want you to know is it's all about circles, my friend. I love rows. For the last two weeks, the first two weeks, and, I, you know, I, I, I try not to brag about our church. Uh, I, I don't get on social media, those kind of things. And, and, but how many know there's nothing wrong with praising God for what he's doing at your church? Amen? The last two, what, let me say thank you for coming at 8 o'clock. Because if you come to 10 o'clock, you're in trouble, or 9.45. Thank you, Sandy. Uh, 9.45, for the last two weeks, we have had to set up chairs in our fellowship hall to, to have people in there. Now, that's good in the sense that we have a lot of people coming. That's bad in the sense that new people are not having the best experience. And if you're new today, we love you and we thank you that you're here. But thank you for supporting that. So God's doing some cool things. I love when people are in rows in our church Stand up, Sandy. Come up here with me because I didn't wear my shirt today. But if you don't know what this hieroglyphic stands for, this is the lifeblood of our church. Circles, everybody say it with me. Circles is greater or better than rows. Everybody say it. Circles are better than rows. Thank you, brother. 
That is a core value of our church. It's biblical and it's relational. And here's what you need to know this morning. We're not about just getting you in a circle to say, I checked off a life group, I'm doing my diligence. It's because we know that life change happens best, Danny, when you and I have breakfast together. Every Monday morning, I'm privileged to sit with this guy and four other guys if we all show up. It's hit and miss. But what I know is we are studying the Word of God together. We're talking about our wives together. In a good way. We're talking about the challenges of life and business. But most of all, we're talking about what God is doing in our heart and life. And how many know that's where real life happens? We don't have time to talk about everything. I can touch base and say, how are the babies? How's your life going on? But if you really need to get into the nitty gritty of man, I need to take a risk and really tell you what's going on. How many know we can't really get that done on Sunday morning? So that means you got to connect with some people that you are going to be with and be friends with. Everybody say friends. And you gotta, you got to commit to this. you got to say, you got a friend in me. Can we put that picture up right now? Because I just love, this is like uh, my, one of my favorite. Dude, toy, dude, I, seriously, I told you this before. At the end of Toy Story 3, when Andy gave his toys away, I'm in the theater with my kids just, (laughs) I am such a weenie when it comes to those things. Put that back up, guys. I want you to see uh, the the graphic because what, that is a life group. I want you to see that. That's why, here's the crazy thing. Just leave, I'm going to do a Bill Wilson. Just leave it up till I tell you to take it down. What you see is a bunch of strange looking characters in there. Some of you are scared to death to join a life group because people are going to be weird. Yes, they are. <laughs> I, you're new today and you're like, what the heck's going on? I don't know. I'm a new crew. I don't know. You know, I've had a bad experience. But here's the deal. You've got, this is the cool thing about life. God makes us individually diverse with different passions. But when we come together, listen, here's the key. And I want you to hear this. When we come together under, under the banner of Jesus submitted to Jesus. And here's what I, I, I believe that Woody's a Christian. Some of you are going, is that theologically correct? <laughs> no, and I don't care. Uh, yeah. So uh, anyway, they took it down. I told you not to take it down. Here's, here's what I want you to know. There is a love that knows no limits. Old Michael English song, man. I love it. Now, I want to I show you a couple verses, and then I'm going to jump into the text. And it, it's John 15. If you want to turn there, go with me. We're going to land in Proverbs 18, then go over to 1 Samuel again, uh, 18. So if you want to go to John 15 really quick, I've got to sh- show you this to set up the foundation of this message on relationships today. And Jesus is talking about abiding in the vine and listening, all the things we talked about. He's talking about the Father has loved me in verse 9, so have I loved you. Now remain in my love. If you keep my commands, you will remain in my love, just as I have kept my Father's command and remain in his love. I told you this so that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be complete. We talked about that during Christmas time. And I like this right here, guys. Verse 12, my command is this, love each other as I have loved you. So check it out. As Jesus loves us, got it? Everybody with me? As Jesus loves us, we should love other people. But watch this. Don't miss this if I can keep my place here because I'm so excited. He says, greater love has no one than this to what? Lay down one's life for one's. Jesus is all up into friendship. Now, this is where a lot of times we can start getting off, and I want to show you something. I think it's going to be really cool, so hang with me. So that you were, uh, greater love has no one than this to lay down one's life for one's friends. Verse 14 is just blew me away at one point in my life when I saw it. And I want, if you're with me right now, I want you to read it out loud. You are my friends if you do what I command. Now, does that mess with anybody? Does that seem organic that Jesus would say, well, there's a requirement to be in my friend. You got to do what I tell you to do. And that can seem like, ah, to me. But here's what, if you remember 
The Bible says, Jesus said in another place, if you what? If you love me, you'll keep my commands. Here's what I know. If I love my wife, I'm going to do whatever I can to make her happy and to make our relationship healthy. That's a love that is giving. It's self-sacrificing. And what, what you're not seeing here is Jesus is saying, I've already given you everything. I've shown you everything. I've di- I will die for you, though you don't love me. But if you love me, here's what's going to organically happen. You're going to do what the Father says because it's the best thing for us. It's the best thing for you. It is not this mechanistic, egomaniacal God being up there going, puppets, do this, and you'll be blessed. He's saying puppets. No, he's not saying puppets. He's saying, he's saying people, my children, why wouldn't you do that? Because if you don't, you're going to miss the blessings of life. Now, it's not easy because we're born with a sinful nature that screws it all up. And so that's the wrestling we're going to talk about over the next few weeks. But I want you to see this. You are my friends. If you do what I command, I no longer call you servants because a servant does not know his master's business. Instead, I have called you friends for everything that I have learned from the Father I have made known to you. Now, I want you to see something. Everybody, go to Proverbs 18 right now. Whoosh. Flip over. Proverbs 18. Here's a familiar verse to a lot of us that are church people. And if you're new to church today, and we're so thankful to have you here, if you're pursuing this Christian thing or you're just here at the invite of someone, I want you to see that this is important for you as an unbeliever to see what God is calling Christians to do because we don't get it right a lot. But when we do, it's beautiful. And I want to read it in the NIV with you, and then we're going to read it from the Amplified, and I believe we have that on the screen. So go with me right here. Verse 24, one who has unreliable friends soon comes to what? Ruin. But there is a friend who sticks closer than a brother. Read that last line with me. But there is a friend who sticks closer than a brother. Now, what you need to learn, women, is that the Bible was written, it's an ancient document, and for the most part was written in the male vernacular to to not say men only, but to say mankind, and it represented men, uh, so it doesn't uh, discriminate in any way against women. So this verse could read, but there's a friend who sticks closer than a sister. Now I want to show you another way to read this. Everybody ready? But there is a friend who sticks closer than a husband. There is a friend who sticks closer than a wife. There is a friend who sticks closer than a sister or a brother or a parent or mom or dad or son and daughter. Now, are there brothers? Anybody in the house have a brother that you just love and you're close to? Raise your hand. A brother. All over the house. Anybody have a sister that you just love? Now, let me ask you a question. Is that brother, sister, parent, those that are they, would you call them a friend? How many to raise their hand and say, yes, they're a friend? And here is the dynamic, right? When Jesus said, I am your friend, Jesus didn't let go of his title as master. Stay with me. This is the, because this is what will revolutionize your life. There are people in here today that have brothers, sisters, husbands, wives, mothers, daughters, and other people you call friends that are not the friendship that Christ is describing. And if we can understand, I'm, only, I'm just, here's a revolutionary commitment. If I can understand that I, God not only calls me to be a husband, he calls me to be a Jesus friend to my wife. That is powerful. That, my friends, will revolutionize your relationship. And here's what a lot of you, come on, some of you, you're in here today and you have capped the potential of your relationship because you're not willing to do what Jesus did to love. And you said, you have said, man, my wife, she messed up. I I give up. I can't get over this mountain. Sarah and I used to talk about how we had the same argument over and over. Anybody ever do that? Anybody ever have the same argument with your kids? Anybody ever get frustrated with your parents? You go, why won't they change? Anybody ever attempted to change your spouse like me? Come on, somebody. How many are loving that one? How many know that does not work? 
Here's how you change your spouse. You love them like Jesus does, and you let the Holy Spirit do the work because he's the only one that can do it anyway. You see, this is, this is an amazing concept. It's very simplistic, but I, I, I want you to get it today. Here, here's what I, I want you to know, guys. Loving relationships are meant to be revolutionary. And when we can humble ourselves and become a servant to the people we love, it will revolutionize your life. And I'm going I'm to tell you, you can go and pray about that one for an hour, a week, a year, because here, look at this. What if all of a sudden we begin to love like Jesus to there was unbelievably more peace in our home, more graciousness? What if, Sarah, you and I saw less bickering in our strong-willed five leadership-type children? We just drove 20 hours one way with our five leadership based, strong-willed children that for some reason my wife prayed for them to be leaders. <laughs> we could have had one or two follow. I don't know. Ed. Here's what I'm learning, though. Yelling at them, making them feel bad, shaming them, it's not going to change them. Loving them, hearing them, encouraging them, praying for them, loving my wife the way they need to see people be loved is the most powerful weapon in my revolutionary war arsenal. I want you to see, I'm going to read a couple of verses for you, give you a couple of takeaways, and we'll be done, guys. What if we learn, what if we truly learn to focus our friendships in 2020. There's two guys called David and Jonathan. 1 Samuel 18, 1 through 4. After David had finished talking with Saul, this is right after he slayed Goliath. We talked about that two weeks ago. Jonathan, who was the son of the king Saul, go home and read chapter 17, 18, 19, and 20. You, get, you just need to go home and study it. After David had finished talking with Saul, Jonathan became one in spirit with David, and he loved him as himself. There you got it. From that day, Saul kept David with him and did not let him return home to his family. And Jonathan made a covenant with David because he loved him as, his, as himself. Jonathan uh, took off the robe he was wearing, gave it to David, along with his tunic, even his sword, his bow and his belt. If you look at the English Standard Version, it says that Jonathan and David were like soul brothers. They were tied in spirit and in soul. And I want to show you three quick characteristics that should be in your relationships. Number one, the one thing that you will do with people you truly love is you will protect them. Everybody say protection. And if you're taking notes today, you need to check your relationships and ask yourself, how much am I protecting my spouse? How much am I protecting my kids? How often do I protect my friends, my roommates, my, my fellow students? You see, at one point, Saul told his son Jonathan and all the attendants to kill David, 1 Samuel 19, 1. He said, I want you to kill David. But Jonathan had taken a great liking to David and warned him. Now, check it out. The, the amazing thing about Jonathan, the son of Saul, was he both respected his father and he loved David, but he chose the will of God first. And David had been anointed to become the next king of Israel. And Jonathan had taken a great liking to David and warned him, my father Saul is looking for a chance to kill you. Be on your guard tomorrow morning. Go into hiding and stay there. I will go out and stand with my father in the field where you are. I'll speak to him about you, and I will tell you what I find out. You want to know what's revolutionary about this? If David is killed, guess who becomes king? Jonathan. Jonathan has renounced his self-protection, his self-promotion that is in the innate response to the fears from the Garden of Eden, self-promote, self-protect. Jonathan is saying God's will is more important. Turn to somebody and say, I need to protect you, baby. I need to protect you. Number two, we promote people. 
When we understand Jesus, it's about promoting others, not ourselves. And where I get in trouble in my marriage is like, why aren't you meeting my needs? Why aren't you doing it my way? Why don't you go where I want to eat? Why don't, you, why, why don't you change your recreational pursuits to fishing, not the beach? Come on, somebody say amen to that. Jesus says, Steve, if you want your wife to love you, you need to change your pursuits to her pursuits. Right? You need to look for her interests. You need to look to your kids' interests. You need to promote her. Here's what uh, 1 Samuel 19, 4 through 6. Jonathan spoke well of David to Saul, his father. Well, we can stop right there. How often do you speak well of the people you love the most to the people around them? How often does your spouse, do your son or daughter, how often does your mom or dad, your friends, your cousins, your aunts, your uncles, those relationships, do they hear you go, man, this guy's a winner. This girl, I love her, man. Even when they're not perfect, because guess what? Ain't none of us in here perfect. Let's, we, we get this out every week. Turn to somebody and go, you messed up. And so am I. Come on, tell them. Come on, balcony, don't be proud. Tell somebody, you're messed up. Come on, tell them. Jonathan spoke well of David to Saul, his father, and said to him, Let not the king do wrong to his servant. Notice Jonathan is being respectful to his dad. He has not wronged you, and what he has done has benefited you greatly. He took his life in his hands when he killed the Philistine. The Lord won a great victory. The Lord won a great victory. Not David. The Lord won a great victory for all Israel, and you saw it and were glad. Why then would you do wrong to an innocent man like David by killing him for no reason? Saul listened to Jonathan and took this oath. As surely as the Lord lives, David will not be put to death. You need to protect those you love. You need to promote them. Guys, some of you, you need to go home today and go, how can I promote the person in this relationship with me? How can I be a better encourager, promoter? And lastly, guys, you need to push or pull. And let me just tell you this. You see, when we are not in Christ, oftentimes the pushing we have in relationship is pushing people down. It is a natural human reaction that when you feel threatened or when you mess up, you look for someone to push down so it makes you look taller and better. That's a natural human reaction. And guess who's the closest to push down? Most often the people closest to you. And what happens because of the stress of work, the stress of life, the failures we have, we look to others to lash out and push down. And some of you, you need to stop pushing people down. And you need to start pushing them up. It's about doing push-ups and pull-ups. All of us need to be pushed. And this is, this is really that revolutionary sign. I call it relational equity. When... when Danny and I spend time together when Carla and Danny and, and Sarah and Steve are in a hipster group, group together and, and all of a sudden something begins to happen and I ask, you know, what do you think about this? And they say something I don't want to hear. Or, or I'm like, man, I'm done with this. I don't want to, and, and, and all of a sudden there is this push to go, you can do this. You're, you're better than this. God has called you to this. I know my friend Homer has done that for me many times. I've come to him. He's a mentor of mine. And, and I'll say, Homer, man, I am I'm stressed. I'm anxious. I don't know what to do. And I remember many breakfasts, he would say to me, Steve, God has called you just like Nehemiah. He said, you got to get back up on that wall. you got to get up on that wall. And something in me, because a friend took a risk and just, Homer didn't just go, oh, Steve, I love you, buddy. It's all right, those stinking church people. <laughs> Holy cow, because we want to sometime, don't we, Homer? But he'll look at me and he'll say, you need to get on the wall. You need to fight the fight. You need to stand. And those are the revolutionary moments in your life. And all of you in here at some point that have done anything worthwhile have had somebody push you because they loved you. But here's the most beautiful thing, guys, and I'm going to leave you with just three quick things. 
and you can write these down. And Ethan, leave them up. You guys leave them up long enough that people can write them down. Here's how I'm going to challenge you to take this home today. I want you to narrow your focus and revitalize your relationships. Stop worrying about your 2,000 friends on Facebook and worry about your husband or wife. What if you sacrifice your social media time to be a promoter and a protector and a pusher in a good way, right? If you narrow your focus and revitalize your relationships, you will revitalize your relationships, you will revolutionize your life. Because relationships are what life's all about. If your relationships are unhealthy, so is your life. Turn to somebody and go, booyah. Number two, I want you to pray a declaration of independence over your relationships. Because some of you are bound up. Some of you are deep in brokenness and dysfunction and abuse. And, and you can't get along with your mom and dad. And you're estranged. And listen, God will give you the wisdom for your next steps. And I'm not saying it's going to be easy or it's going to be restored tomorrow. I don't know. I can't, pro- God, I can't promise you anything. But what God will do is bring you peace and lead you into healthy relationships. Some of you, because you're so bound up, you need to pray and declare independence on your relationships, freedom. And number three, guys, I'm all, here's, here's the real news. Get ready for the battle, but stay in it. Get ready for the battle, but stay in it, dude. I have been fasting a substance I won't name because we're not supposed to talk about her, but it is sweet. I'll just give you that hint. And it's been a battle. Here's what you don't, I'm going to give you a little word of wisdom side sermon. Don't go to Krispy Kreme the night before you start your fast. (laughs) Jesus. Oh, man. As we prepare to close, what will you do in 2020? to make your relationships revolutionary. What will you do in 2020 to make your, revolution, your relationships revolutionary? My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest frame but wholly lean on Jesus' name. On Christ, the solid rock I stand, all other ground, if you know it, say it with me, is what? The one reason I am not a divorced man today is because she bases her life not on this fantastic man. That's a joke. <laughs> she does base her life on a fantastic man. His name is Jesus Christ. And I will tell you, I I don't have time to tell you the whole story. At the height of our brokenness and craziness, trying to plan a church, raise kids, doing it all the wrong way, screaming at each other, threatening each other, we stand here today unified, not perfect, but in love, I would say more than ever before. Because our hope is not built on anything less than Jesus' blood and his righteousness. I dare not trust in the sweetest book that tells me how to get my marriage better, but I wholly lean on Jesus' name. On Christ the solid rock I stand, on other, all other relational ground, my friends, is sinking sand. You want to revolution, revolutionize your relationship, commit yourself to Jesus Christ like never before. He's got to be Number one, he's got to be leader because he is the ultimate friend. He's the ultimate example. He's saying to us, be friends to people the way I'm a friend to you. Give, love, serve, have compassion, have passion to do the work of the Father. My friends, that will change the world. Let's pray. Father, I thank you that you give us the opportunity to build our life on you. And Jesus, today, as Pastor Eddie leads us at Northport, I pray you do something revolutionary. Father, there is a lot of brokenness in this room. We try to hide it. We try to mask it. Lord, from people 
because I watched Lisa's video and saw that it is unhealthy relationships that leads us to make mistakes, not because we want to be bad or evil, but because there's an enemy who seeks to kill, steal, and destroy, and little innocent lives get taken in the process. And God, I pray that we will learn as Christians to example and live and model revolutionary, loving, Christ-like relationships. And Jesus, I pray for healing for those who need it this morning. I just pray right now, God, just wrap your arms around people because it starts with us understanding how much you love us, how much you want us, you're calling us. You want to be our dad, Heavenly Father. When some of us don't even know what a good dad looks like. God, do a work this morning that I can't do. Steve's works can't change anything, but the Holy Spirit through them can transform and revolutionize lives. Lord, give people next steps. Send friends their way. And Lord, may we today just take time to thank you for good friends. I'm going to give you a little side note. Just everybody keep your heads bowed. Some of you need to leave this room and call somebody, text somebody. I, you need to go see them and just say, thank you for being my friend. Tell your husband or wife, thank you for being my friend. Tell your son or daughter, thank you for being my friend. Your mom or dad, your cousins, aunts, uncles. Good friends. And Lord, today, if there's one who doesn't know you in this place, we never want to leave without giving an opportunity for that one who's looking for the truth of life and that life is Jesus Christ the way the truth and the life and God I pray today they would pray the prayer and say Jesus forgive me for all of my trying to do it my way take my sin take my faults Lord I believe you died on the cross for me son of God save me today you may not even know what all those words mean, but you know something in your heart is saying, I need Jesus completely, 100%. Pray a prayer right where you sit, and God will change you forever. Lord, I thank you for revolutionizing our relationships so that we can revolutionize the world. In the name of Jesus, we pray. And everybody said...